center has a purpose it has a vision it has a mission now the very purpose of establishing the center is to promote the culture of india and the relevance of this culture to modern day uh, economic development of the state of india so in this regard we have uh, uh, invited and we have been inviting and we are likely to invite even in the future a few brilliant scholars and we have in one such scholar today and he is mr satavadani ganesh he was born in the year 1962 and he is uh, a brilliant scholar in the area of sanskrit poetry he is not only an authority in sanskrit poetry he is a delit from two universities the university of hampi as well as the university of tumkur has awarded him with the doctor of literature in addition to this he is a master of several languages when i speak of the master of several languages he is an authority in the area of uh, uh, sanskrit is the first language prakrit the second language the third one is the telugu the fourth one is kannada and the fifth one happened to be tamil in addition to this he knows german and a master of italian languages as well so we can say he is a philologist a master of several languages as well and in the area of avadhana he has done immense contribution and for having done his immense contribution this has been recognized even at the government of india level and uh, right from almost for 30 35 years he has been a speaker and promoting the heritage of this country the culture of this country the sanskrit poetry of this country for example when you speak about sanskrit poetry uh, i don't wish to elaborate further now you might be knowing kalidasa's work uh, all of them were written in sanskrit literature so for example the germans uh, uh, when they studied kalidasa's poetry uh, especially the german poet goethe goethe a master poet he is called as the master poet of europe during his lifetime he pointed out remember it is a history of development so when speaking about kalidasa shakuntala what is he said it is a history of development the development of literature into law and a lot of couplets are being uh, written about this so we are fortunate to have a wonderful scholar amongst our midst and without wasting any moment i request the honorable speaker to address the gathering thanks a lot for this uh, informal interaction and i think uh, all of you are law students Uh, my topic is indian literature and its uh, relevance and how come law students will have any relevance with indian literature or literature in general that may be a question uh, let me answer that eventually first we should know what is literature literature is expression of emotions through language if our emotions are beautifully expressed in a phonetic language it becomes literature even the animals have emotions but they are unable to express through phonetic language and we don't know we don't even know what is the concept of beauty of animals <laughs> we have the concept of beauty in human beings and there also it varies it is a subjective one man's food is another man's poison likewise it changes but more or less we have some agreement with the beauty of language the beauty of literature the beauty of music the beauty of sculpture the beauty of dance the beauty of film and so many other things coming back to literature if expression of our emotions happens in a beautiful way it becomes literature even if i am very thirsty in water that is also an emotional expression i am thirsty and that's why i need a cup of water but that is not literature means it should be beautifully expressed uh, one instance i remember one poet writes uh, khalil gibran while describing fame and also obscurity he says what is after all a root of a tree there is a flower that denied fame 
If a flower denies fame, it becomes root. Roots are not seen. Roots are within the soil. And then, because of the roots, the tree is strong, and the tree is nourished, and even the flowers, fruits, everything are because of the firmness of root. In the here the poet is saying, not a root, it is a flower, but it is a flower. That flower which denied fame, it has become a root. Means flowers, they don't deny fame. Means flower by his estimation, they are after name and fame. But roots are not so. They have voluntarily denied fame and they have come to oblivion and by doing so, they are nurturing the tree, they are protecting it, they are making it firm to stand in the soil. All this is happening because of their desire, not after name or fame. It means good people never bother about name or fame. They only bother about the sustenance and total support of the system, total support of the society, and they do allow others to get fame, name, recognition, doesn't means so many layers of meaning, so many ripples of meaning, so many ripples of thought, they arise because of this statement. And that makes us to visit that repeatedly. Then it becomes beauty. A great poet of uh, perhaps 6th uh, or 7th century India, Indian poet, a Sanskrit uh, writer from Gujarat by name Magha, he tries to define beauty. Kshane kshane yan navatam upaiti tadeva rupam ramaniyataya. Whatever makes us feel that is new and new for every visit, and there lies the secret of beauty. The secret of beauty is novelty. Unfailing novelty, untarnished novelty. It is brilliant. Why we, uh, we, we, we people run after gold? Because it never gets tarnished. Unlike brass, unlike bronze, or unlike copper, or unlike even silver, gold always shines. That glitters is gold. Though the proverb goes, all that glitters is not gold, we do accept that that glitters is gold. Means the glittery, the shining is very important. Shining is freshness. A flower, when it is fresh, it will have a fragrance, tenderness, color, softness, everything is there. And that is what we need. And every morning we see such flowers in the creepers, in the trees, and in the plants. So, this way of beauty should be infused into our expressions. Then it will be called literature. And beauty is a value by itself. As they have truth, non-violence, friendship, honesty, and so many other values, we do have beauty as a value. Without beauty, we can't sustain longer. It is for beauty we live. Beauty is a means for happiness. Let me come to these things later, but what I wanted to say is, to define literature, we should focus on expression, and they should have an experience of beauty. So a phonetic expression rooted in the beauty of experience is called literature. Then coming to you, Allah, they excelled as masters of beautiful expression. I think at least some of you have heard the name of Nani Palkiwala, haven't you? He had a thorough understanding of English literature, had thoroughly read all the classics, not only classics in English, but also great classics of other languages. Other languages that included Indian languages like Sanskrit. He was a devout student of Sanskrit. He read Ramayana and Bhabharata and Kalidasa and such other poets in translation. And he frequently used to quote them. And he was very well rooted in philosophy. And he had good command over works of Shakespeare. Almost all the great plays of Shakespeare, the great four tragedies and four comedies, four tragic comedies, all these things he knew well. And because of that, his expression became strong, effective and precise. Because in the argument, one will not be given too much of time. In a limited time, because the judge should not get bored. 
within the limited span of time effectively one has to put his thoughts his insights across and for that literature comes as a very very handy tool that is one of the uses of literature especially to people who pursue law and then become advocates and argue for a case but they should also know something more than that that is the life values and the human emotions that are embedded in literature after all what is law can anyone define law for me yes for who yes to whom you are going to be a class if you don't understand the nature of human beings all your law the whole edifice of law will collapse it means first you receiving gain should be understood can anyone very easily reveal his or her intent easily it's so difficult to cross examine a person and extract truth is it not when that is the case how to understand the heart of the other person no one will open up nowadays in the world of in the age of twitter in the age of instagram in the age of facebook it's becoming even more difficult to know the intent of the other person i remember very great advocate freedom fighter statesman institution builder and also a visionary by name kannailal manikyal munshi who pioneered bharati vidya bhavan and was also uh, one among the early ministers in the first cabinet of free india he uh, he says in his uh, series of novels by name krishna avatar perhaps in the uh, in the third book the book of five brothers he says shakuni the arch villain one among the arch villains in mahabharata he will be addressing duryodhana duryodhana is very haughty and is very impulsive and to him shakuni gives her advice a very you know, beautiful advice but a very crooked advice remember duryodhana speech is meant not to express your thoughts but to conceal them many times that is being the case in the hard real world in the manipulative world that is so it goes on it means no one will be voluntarily coming and revealing if not why hundreds of films rather thousands of films were made after love stories where the lovers will not be revealing their love only at the back end of the film when everything goes <laughs> derailed there they reveal it means it is so difficult to know the intent of the person next to me then how to make law if you don't know what is the nature of human being how successful you become a law maker then literature is the only way because social sciences give dictums it is something like a science book in a chemistry book sodium is a compound of uh, so sodium chloride is a compound of sodium and chlorine na plus cl it will become nacl it is common salt like that all that will be given but no science book will tell you to taste sodium chloride no book on fire will have a line don't touch fire your hands will burn it is not prescriptive unlike your law which is prescriptive in nature science is just descriptive there is a pit there is a valley don't go and fall there it will not say there is pit there is valley all that it describes so science that is physical or uh, biological or even chemical science it is descriptive in nature it is neutral to values science is not indifferent to values but it is neutral to values but prescriptive sciences they are normative sciences economics law sociology and the like they are prescriptive in nature they have to do with values without values law has no meaning law is a small footnote or a punctuation in the text of values that's why you have to understand values the most important being human values to understand human values first to go for human beings 
and the next person is also very difficult to understand many times you will not be understanding your own parents I have seen many couple who even after celebrating their silver jubilee or golden jubilee of married life the other person the spouse is not understood by the husband and vice versa so literature is one which opens up all these things in literature the emotions of human beings are very deeply and beautifully narrated in a very vivid way it is narrated uh, he while introducing me generously told i you know many languages one among them is classical greek and then classical latin in greek they have a great epics of homer the adikavi of the greece land and in his uh, great epic iliad so many uh, mind boggling situations they appear one among them is you just imagine the heroine is helen most of you would have heard if you have watched uh, the yesterday's film by name troy you would have uh, connected with this story troy is based on iliad helen was eloped by paris prince of troy and helen's husband manilaus along with his elder brother agamemnon wages war with a big fleet of 1000 ships against uh, uh, the trojans who were in the city of troy just imagine the situation a wife even ignoring her children her own children going the penning man far away this is one case all the people they has been everyone they go they travel for 10 years they fight for 10 years they they totally they fight for 10 years travel and fighting and people like with this use they take 10 more years to come back helen ignored discarded her children her husband and ran away why in the same epic character character odysseus popularly known by the english pronunciation as ulysses his own wife uh, penelope was first cousin of helen she devotedly waited for her husband to come back and waited for 20 long years both are princesses both were born and brought up in the same family and both were married to very well known royal families heroic good looking able administrators in spite of that one lady did so and another lady waited the story of penelope appears in the next epic of homer this is odyssey in greek and it is called odyssey in english there in greek in ancient indian in ancient greece there is no rule that wife should wait for husband forever and if husband is died she has to live like a widow no such thing was there it was all according to her choice so many suitors many young men came to uh, penelope and then they forced her to marry she told i am weaving a cloth a coffin cloth for my father in law till i complete <coughs> i cannot marry only after its completion i can marry so keep away every day she used to weave and in the night she used to remove it in that way she used to avoid the suitors who always used to come and test her that means according to indian standards she is a mahapatibrata she can stand with her sita draupadi savitri and like means the same culture the same social background the same royal ambience two women behave differently this in the crime report you can you can't understand if you read in everyday newspaper i am very fond of reading crime news because my as a poet as a novelist as a playwright and a short story writer i want to know the intent of people behind their good or bad deeds 
only by knowing that my work will be enriched so you when cross examining a person who has been accused of a murder or rape or so what is his intent what is her intent that has to be understood that cannot be known by the crime report in the crime news only the events are in a sketchy manner they are narrated x comes kills wife's wife or x comes and kills y and elopes with the wife the wife's wife and goes like that why what for how was the turmoil nothing if a person knows it becomes easier to understanding understand human nature and then build a better law build a better society and build a better future for next generation this is how literature has its roots in the deeper emotions of human being and that's why we have to go for that uh, if we come to our epics i mentioned about the western adikavi homer the first poet of the poet of the western world is homer and our eastern adikavi first poet is valmiki when valmiki had a thought of writing a poem based on the life of rama he was initiated by the creator himself there is a very beautiful suggestion in that valmiki when he was in the hermit hermitage lord brahma the creator came and told you come to the poem this morning you heard a brief story something like a news report by narada the wandering sage and now you write it in an elaborate manner because he gave an equation you expand it he gave thread you make a cloth like that then he started writing it is said while writing before starting he contemplated over contemplated over all the events of ramayana and he came to know how the characters spoke and how they thought and what was the aside talk what was that was untold all that the poet saw seeing means by the power of imagination will be knowing is it not imagination is that caliber and it is called as pratibha even in science even in art everywhere we have a very significant role that is being played by imagination imagination is like the third eye a great kashmiri writer of 11th century by name mahima bhatta says sahi chakshur bhagavatah tritiyam iti giyate yena pashyanti bhavartha kavyartha dasam trilokya vrtinah so it is all pervading because uh, we don't know how all that happened within the heart of a person but a poet can know because we cannot Uh, calculate or we cannot even dream of certain things an imaginative artist would do i shall give one example for that uh, in films the actress will present so beautifully you all know even in the theater and all once george bernard shaw a very well known playwright of england basically he is from ireland he came to uh, a, he, he he is well known and he rejected even nobel prize and he once came across uh, one great uh, stage actor of india from karnataka from bellary and that uh, person's name is bellary raghava who was a very good stage actor was an advocate and a good stage artist also Uh, you know in bangalore there is a theater in front of ravindra kala kshetra ada amateur drama association one of the founders was he and he presented the character of shailak hamlet and such shakespearean plays he said bernard shaw it seems it said he said i don't like shakespeare but because of you i start appreciating him he showed like that and in one of his plays he presented hirnya kashipu a mythological character of indian puranas you all know hirnya kashipu was a demon and his son is pralada 
and father and son had rift son was a devotee and father was not he was always against the devotion here itself in our mythology we see the rift between father and children the son ultimately he shows whether in this pillar or in that pillar or roof or where your lord is everywhere when once he says that in this pillar also the lord is present the demon hirinda kashpu he breaks open that the pillar then emerges narasimha the furious god half lion and half human being the story and all you may be knowing but ballari raghava when presenting what he did any other actor would immediately face that uh, narasimha and fight but ballari raghava while playing the role of hirinda kashpu immediately she kept the little pralada behind him and came forward it means in spite of he having grows against his son when some furious thing when a terrifying uh, creature appears in front of me i have to protect my child that is the human instinct though the father was against son when some calamity appears our parents also do like that they may be fighting with us they may be scolding us they may be chiding us if something wrong happens they come they try to save us likewise these subtleties can only be known by an imaginative person if not commoner will not be knowing but a common man can also appreciate why why the parents have that much of interest in their children have you observed your parents will be liking you much more than their respect for their parents they like you they love you more children than their parents and even their parents also did so your grandparents they used to love your parents more than your great grandparents because it is the biological law we all know the nature is always after the future try to protect the species so that is in our dna so if we love our children more than our parents it's not wrong we are working according to nature but that we have to respect our parents because it is culture but we being more sensitive people should give room for culture these things will be known through literature law is of course part of culture law is not in nature you all know jungle law what is jungle law there is no law so this aspect of culture this nature of human beings every such things will be known deeper and deeper through literature and that's why we have to read two fold need two fold use of literature one is refining our expression making it more and more interesting more and more comprehensive more and more crisp more and more attractive that is regarding the form the other one is regarding the content becoming more and more aware of human nature why things change why people go wrong what makes in the bhagavad gita it is very clearly said and that may be the essence of many other religious texts belonging to different religions as well arjuna asks krishna ata kena prakarena papam charati purushah janann pita varshneya bala diva niyojita how come the human being willfully yes not unwillingly willfully yes willfully commits mistakes as though he is compelled to do so by some external agency for that the obvious answer given by krishna is <coughs> kama yesha krodha yesha rajo guna samudbhava mahashano mahapapma vidhyena miha vairinam our likes and dislikes liking is kama and disliking is krodha these two things only make us go wrong if you like a thing more we will not even be thinking of consequences whether it will be good or bad so also we start disliking even when we are blinded by that 
you are carried away by that you take the whole history of world literature the same thing you just think of your favorite films the running current the undercurrent that runs beneath every film every beautiful film is this liking and disliking attraction is love and disliking and fighting against that is hero heroism so kama krodha they become shringara and veera the two most important rasas according to indian aesthetics heroism and love you all know in so many films the first half is full of romance and the second half is full of adventure fight agitation that is the masala all time tested masala is it not we need not disagree with, we need not dismiss that in a light way light way it is the human nature but it has to be refined though it cannot be bordered as completely and it is wrong also it can be controlled it can be channelized nobody says love is wrong nobody says fighting against something is wrong fighting against evil and loving the lovable that is what to be carried out and here comes literature as a great source of inspiration and understanding that's why uh, i remember one of my well known uh, advocate friends i have so many advocates as my good friends in study of literature all of us they sit every week and study classics belonging to indian tradition and also great literature and there he says what is ramayana it is uh, a case of abduction and elopement and what is mahabharata it is a case of property dispute one is a criminal case and other is a civil case in that way advocates would reduce the problems of ramayana and mahabharata to their legal legal terminology it is true to an extent but with that there are so many other things also just imagine the era of age that is proper is the 30th year and in treta yuga the age of ramayana after 40 years the legal rights will reach the crest and that's why it is thought is that after 40 years even if he tries to claim his the new data the thing is not they are all the lullaby so very cleverly she asked from a went to forest but why he went without fighting even today we have our ministers mlas mps and others nobody is, has promised anything and there is no promise that every elected one will become minister but they fight so much they change the parties so many operation kamala operation hastas many many operations the patients deaths will all happen and even the death of our patients also but rama we do that in the second world when whether it is real or not god was his psychology voluntarily not creating any uh, 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 any human and even rama never ever even instigated a civil war because in the ramayana you know people of ayodhya they the whole of them they followed rama to forest but rama cleverly avoided them when all were sleeping in the first night of that very first night when rama left for forest and he took other way and by dew he went to forest then to forest so no people can definitely be far they came back to ayodhya in the in the happened in ramayana ayodhya part that means can a person be so good so nice it has to be understood means people by intent will be good we can't be cynical all people are bad everyone is born wicked no and like we uh we have certain cases where people are born wicked duryodhana is a born wicked person 
for no reason he fought against Pandava. But everything was given to him. But yes, Jal. Kaiti had Jal. So he is Duryodhana. And he was Ravana. He was a very great achiever. But his weakness was women. But at least with the weakness, he had no dignity. By the time he abducted Sita, he thought there is no charge in raping. The person should come on her own accord. Then only one will be getting the real joy of romance. To that extent, Ravana was liberated. He is much, much better than our battle-aging uh, hooligan people who are known in the case of Nirdaya and other. Such, uh, I, I can't even equate them with the demons. Demons are much better. The born rapish. They don't care for any value. But Ramana is much better means he had raped earlier. He had a very bad record. But over time he understood that such type of animal force enforcement has no charge. She should come on her own accord, but I have to test her. <laughs> it is a very well known joke. How to make a cat taste pepper. No cat tastes pepper because it's very hard. Hard. So how to make? Uh, cat let's say you mix it with the, its the milk or any other food. Then it will taste pepper. You mix it with ice cream or something, it will taste. Then the other person says, no, 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 it's cheating. Or make it fast. When there is no way, it has to eat that man. No, no, that is very cruel. Earlier is cheating, this one is cruel. How, how to make it eat on its own accord? The third person says, you make injury in the tail. Sprinkle pepper powder on that, then it will lick on its own. So you can make the cat taste pepper. And that was communist. This suggestion. This is how Ravana too pointed. Every day going to Sita, he was kidnapped, she was kidnapped, abducted, she was imprisoned. Every morning, every evening, he used to go, accept me, accept me, like that. He used to tempt by all measures. But physical enforcement was not part of him. To that extent, he is being Such peculiar persons are there. We can't know the details of the emotions by paper reports or crime daily reports and they are only a sensationalizing to literature will be knowing that. In classics will be knowing. Not even in personality development books. Because in personality development books, it is a stereotype. If you go to classics, go to literature, it's a very, very deep approach. You'll be doing multi layers. One more example I will draw to that from Abharta. Kunti, mother of Pandava. She was uh, uh, wedded to Pandu. And Pandu was wedded to another way by name Madhuri. And Pandu was cursed. And so he could not get children. In those days, in Hindula, there is a class, but uh, it is not existing in this age. But in those years, it was there. If a person is unable to get the children in his wife, he can request some other person to be kept. It is as good as uh, perdonation. That is called yoga. In ancient India, it was there. Means how open minded was the society and how broad based was the scheme. By the yoga, Kunti got three sons. And Madri, at once, she got twins, two sons. And there was a scheme, and Kunti had a special magical power, it is said so. And that she had shared with Madri, and that's why the gods came and they donated, it so happened. Then, Pandu requests 
you have three sons. Padri only once she had the kid. Give her one more chance by sharing that magical power of mantra. Then Kunti says, No. I didn't knew my mind was not that intelligent. I was not that intelligent. Madhu was very intelligent. She at once, by the grace of twin gods, Ashwinis, she got twins. If I give one more opportunity, she may pray for another twin gods or other multiple gods and get the triplets or whatsoever. And her children's strength will increase. I will become minority. I shouldn't become minority. My children should be majority. So, Kunti's children are three and Madhuri's children are two. By looking at that, how mean is how selfish she is. But, Pan do die. Then, Madhuri, that is the only case of Sati in the ancient epics of India. That is not even Sati. There is no procedure. Madhuri and Arno are alone apart dying. But Kunti stops and no, you should die. I will die. As an elder boy, I shall die. Madhuri says, no, you have to stay because you don't have any bayas against my children. You have reservations against me, but not my children. Because my children are minority, you know. But I have my bayas against you and your children also. Because they are major, so I should die. So sophisticated is human mind. They are difficult to understand. How magnanimous is Kunti? At one level she is not, at some other level. If you apply this equation, at times our friends will be behaving badly. At some other time they will be very generous. It is very difficult to decide. Our siblings, we all know the bring sibling rivalry is so bad. Always the elder will be suffering or the elder will be suffering. People would say, parents would say, you are elder, you better adjust, you better accommodate. So you are elder, that's why you have to have this responsibility. Like that the elder will always be deprived of comforts and vice versa. These all the things happen. It's all that we can recognize goodness here and there. So the human nature, human mind is so complex. That can be understood. This is how the content of literature makes us. I am just giving from the epics because you may be knowing the story like this. If not, I would have drawn many instances from contemporary novels, contemporary films, or stories, or plays, or whatsoever. Everywhere he has such instances. Any great work of literary art, it has such things. And then coming to expression. Wonderful expression is seen in poetry. I shall give one example from the conversation of Radha and Krishna. Krishna, who was the darling of Punadal in Gokula, the village on the banks of Yamuna or Yamuna, for 13 years as a boy, a boy teen, up to that he was. And then he was summoned by his battle with Kamsa to Mathura and he had to go. He has to leave all the people, the good friends. The good girlfriends, all the testing. And Radha is one among them. They are all paid by the separation of Krishna. And Radha says, To be fair, what she should say? We do find the difficulty. Our closest friends, if they are leaving for abroad, if they are going for uh, going in search of their fortune to some other country, some other state, it will not be easy. Nowadays, they have WhatsApp and so many things. Earlier, apart from the nail veins, they had no other connection. Even before that, even before the industrial revolution, we didn't even have locomotive. Their hearts were the highest speed. How to see people for those to us? God is gone forever. Then Radha says, Mabha is Yapamangal. Oh Krishna, if I say don't go, it's not auspicious. We had a belief. If the person is going somewhere, don't go, you should not question him like that. It's a bad omen. Brother Kila, you please go. There is no friendship. You are friendship. I am going abroad. Go, go. Brother Kila, Nehena Shunya Pathvacha, no friendship. Then what do you say? You stay with me. 
Krishna. It is Prabhuta. This is domination. Everyone should be given their personal freedom, personal space. At least three by three space has to be given like that. They have modern rules. I don't know all this. <coughs> You do as you like. It is a very convenient, politically correct expression. Tatra Udakina, Tatra Udakina, it is reluctance. You do as you like. Anyone would say that what does he need friends? You do as you like. It is leaving as an orphan. Udakina. Then the ultimate romantic melodrama statement is there, melodramatic statement. No jiva me vina. Without you, I can't live. Then, uh, before 30 years or so, the lovers of the silver screen used to say, No jiva me vina. So, ye ke vatan. Aap ke vada. You can say, I can't live without you. If it is possible, even after you go in Madhura, if I live here happily, or at least if I breathe, it is a reason to be statement. I am very good. That's why. So, Krishna, please teach me that one sentence, magical sentence, of how to say, how to be the fair wedding. I don't know, please teach me and do Even Krishna cannot teach it. Means it is so difficult to separate that people are in love. And that is suggested. And for that, the expressions are so logical. Madha is capable of don't go in the next vision. Pratikila, boom, no friendship. Krishna, you stay here, it is domination. Yathartha Purushva, you do according to your wish. It is reluctance. Without you, I can't live. It will be falsified. So, all alternatives are given. And also, how the alternatives are wrong and how they fail is also given. A very, very structured way. And yet, so beautifully done. It means, we can't say such wonderfully manipulated, calculated, designed words in our daily life. Is it not? Poetry gives the best expression to the best form. And that's why we have to go for that. The language, the expression, such things will make us more sharp, more sensitive, more tender, more understanding, more courteous, and naturally, will be like the way one and If a person has good words, meaningful words, and well-meaning words, and honest words, accommodating nature, naturally that person will be endeared by one and all. That itself is a great goodwill. So, literature has so much to offer. And this we see in every language, not just of India, but the whole world. If we know our literature is better because we can understand our society better. Once in uh, Mysore University, there was an English professor who used to come from England itself. Because in those days of British India, people of high positions were all appointed from England. White men were occupying those positions. They had a very hefty salary also. Banking cash was that professor. Well, he came from Ireland to India and was teaching. And he was a strict disciplinarian. And he used to take classes on composition. He was a grammarian. And that's why our people used to find English difficult as in today you find that. It's very difficult. So our, our boys used to feel bad and they used to blame him behind his back. In Canada, they were speaking. You know, sir, how problematic he is like that. He heard that sound. Sorry for using that unparliamentary word. It is for this uh, anecdote I have to. And this person, Frank in Dash, caught hold of that word and asked his colleague, his colleague, what is the meaning of this? All the boys, whenever they they speak about the meat. They know this word not much. But the Indian professor was hesitant to give the real meaning. Because it's a blemish. But yet, as yet, the meaning is not to do. So how come they know that? 
His mother was a widow and she got remarried. But in those days of India, widow remarriage was not a third of it was unhealthy. And that's why it is a blame. Nobody else is not a blame. Means the cultural context is very, very important. If we know the cultural context, we can understand that very well. Uh, that's why uh, it is very difficult to understand the literature and appreciate the literature of some other country, of some other culture. It is easier for us to understand and appreciate our culture and our languages and our literature. That's why we have to read it. Whether it is Kannada, Telugu, or Tamil, or Hindi, or Bengali, or so on, we have to read. And then go to Western literature also. Try to know its culture. Try to know the relevance of those cultures and try to appreciate the literature. Then you will be understanding if you read a novel, you will be knowing not just one story, you will be knowing one life itself. It is always said every person has a story sufficient to write a novel. It is his own or her own story. And a creative mind can write the emotions of so many others. I am a bachelor and I have written some stories about the feelings of women and some women, some girls, college girls, they have, they have read and asked me, how do you know how to seek out this so deeply? It is by imagination, observation and imagination. I have dictated several dances and dramas, drama also. There also I have dictated and directed the dance of and the characterization of women characters. Even there, the same thing has happened. Because if we extend our heart, if we extend our feelings, as you know, blood group has no gender. So emotions have no gender. We can transcend gender by going deeply into the world of emotions and that's literature. That's so a wonderful spectrum of human emotion is revealed and that will make us understand our clients better, our co-lawyers better, our judges better and our witnesses better, our family members better, our friends and our enemies also better. That is how literature is very very important. This is, I conclude my brief deliberation. If you have any relevant question connected with this topic, you are most welcome. Thank you for this. Please, please, be seated. Be comfortable as I am. Thank you, sir. The, my question was uh, as most of us do not know original Sanskrit or classic Sanskrit as such, how reliable is the English translation of the could be and how can we, I mean how authentic can be and how can we uh, like, uh, be sure that it is original or real and it will carry the same essence as it was in the original text. Uh, many translations have here and here and there. Even the best scholars while translating, especially the non-Indian translations, they are true, it's a very important fact. That's why I always advocate our people to read Indian translations. Means instead of reading the translation of Shakuntala done by long ago for the first time done by William Jones and so many people have done it. Better go to a Kannada translation of Basupa Shastri or Ganapati Muliyara, K. Krishna Murti or a Hindi translation or a Gujarati translation done by a great person like Uma Shankar Joshi. Such translations from the India, by the Indian, in Indian languages, they are always better. Because uh, the transformation losses are very, very minimal. And uh, as Milton said, a great uh, epic poet of the English uh, world, next to Shakespeare, he is uh, heralded as the best poet of the to England, he says one tongue is not a tongue. If you know one language, you don't know any language. At least, fortunately, we Indians have uh, the opportunity to 
understand that the sea could many languages, we don't even form a tree. It so happens, especially people who stay near the vicinity of the area, they, uh, they are exposed to Tamil, sometimes Telugu, and then, of course, Hindi is there. Our Guru Darshan is the Hindi self taught in book. Like this, we have. But so we can read many languages and which is better. And it is always best to read the original. The melody, the music cannot be translated. For example, uh, one Sanskrit poem I shall say, or Telugu poem. You'll be knowing Telugu is often said as Italian of East. One Telugu poet of 15th century, 16th, 15th century, called uh, Krishna Devaraya, Allahani Pedana, his one poem I shall recite how melodious it is. The meaning is very simple. One person by name, Prabhara, he went to Himalayas and saw the beauty of Himalaya. This is all. But how he says, Atajani Kantya Bhumi Suruta Ambara Chumbi Shira Sarajani Patala Mural Mural Mutata Bhanga Taranga Vradanga Nishwana Sputa Nadana Anupula Paripulla Kala Patala Pijala Mun Katakatar Karenu Karakam Sipasala Muchi Tashaila Mun The falls gently bouncing on the boulders of Himalaya, on the rocks of Himalaya and growing Abhanga, Taranga, Vrdanga, Nishvana, Sputa and the peacocks are dancing Kala, Pakala, Pijala, Mun and the elephants moving and the foothills of Himalaya Katakatara, Karen, Karakam, Pitasar, Mushi, Tashaila Mun This melody cannot be brought in any other European language Ita Govinda, a masterly work of Jaideva of 12th century Mindati Chandana Mindu Kirana Manu Mindati Keda Madhiru Vyala Nilaya Milani Nagarla Vivakala Yati Malay at the Viru have not even added any musical note. Just the way that it's the piano. It cannot be translated into any other language. But the content, of course, it can always be translated. It's not like Kursida, Ramcharit Manas in the of the language, Sita's friend attended, sees Rama Dakshina moving in the palace garden. She comes to Sita and says, How beautiful, how handsome those two things are. She is unable to describe how beautiful they are. Her inability itself is so well said by the poet. Kama Gauram to me, Kai, Bhattani, Gira, Nayana, Nayana, Dibhani. I don't know whether to say they are fair or dark. The eyes which before their beauty had no mouth to speak out, and the mouth had no eyes to identify and recognize and express. Means mouth has no experience and eye has no expression. And that's why whatever the effort, the beauty, the handsomeness of those two princes, useless. That is the suggestion. This content can be translated, but not the form the melody of.